Hello, this is Mark Larochelle from Productive Computing and Productive Computing University. Thanks for joining us on this video. We wanted to take a moment and provide you with an excerpt from a course called Claris FileMaker Pro Advanced One. This is a third installment in a series of courses that we provide at Productive Computing University. These courses are specifically designed to train you, the FileMaker developer. We start with the first course, which is called Beginner where we literally start from scratch with a blank file and we build that file together while we learn the concepts and the theories that go along with developing a professional FileMaker database solution. Then we go on to the intermediate course. Things get a little bit more advanced. We learn about scripting and the basic relationships and our file continues to take shape and get more advanced. In this third course, Advanced One, we take everything up a notch. We talk extensively about the various relationships that you might come across as a professional developer. We go deeper with scripting, subscripts, variables, global fields, and you'll come across these concepts on a regular basis as your development skills continue to grow. We also go into great depth on how to protect the file from a security standpoint in preparation for publishing it and sharing it with others. Okay, now for the lesson excerpt. In this lesson, we discuss sharing your file with FileMaker Server. FileMaker Server is an important and powerful aspect of the platform, allowing you to serve and host your file over the internet in a secure way to a variety of destinations. For example, with FileMaker Server, you can securely connect via FileMaker Pro, FileMaker Go, FileMaker WebDirect, and the built-in FileMaker Data API allowing connectivity via web applications or other third-party sources. On top of that, hosting your FileMaker file puts you in a position to directly connect to Claris Studio, as well as Claris Connect. You can choose to host the file yourself or with a third-party hosting provider, such as Productive Computing, or with Claris Directly using FileMaker Cloud. If you do decide to host with Claris Directly, Please let us know, as we may be able to provide a discount and can partner up with you on that licensing purchase. Here I have a browser running Claris FileMaker Server. It happens to be running on Linux using AWS, also known as Amazon Web Services. Amazon Web Services is a public cloud provider where you can set up virtual servers on Windows or Linux to host your data using FileMaker Server. Or you can use AWS using a variety of options that they provide to enhance your developer environment or to provide a unique solution for a customer or user. If you want to learn more about how FileMaker developers use AWS, we have a course called AWS for Claris FileMaker. And of course, as I already mentioned, we have a full-blown Mastering FileMaker Server course available here at Productive Computing University. So with my server up and running, I'll click on the Databases tab and we can see that the only thing running and being hosted at the moment is FM Server Sample, which is a file that comes after you install FileMaker Server for the first time. Our goal is to get our file up here hosted using server so that we can share it to multiple people. So for now, I'll hide this browser and we'll locate our PCU Gaming Company file. We want to prepare this file for hosting. So there's a few requirements for that. We'll go to File, Sharing, share with FileMaker clients, and we'll want to be sure that the PCU Gaming Company or whatever file you'll be wanting to share is selected here, and then you have to choose either all users or specify users by privilege set. This is very similar to what we did in the previous lesson. If I click specify, right now I have full access. Let's also add Joe with staff access for use over the wide area network being hosted by FileMaker. Notice here it says don't display in hosts file list. This is if you want to be extra secure where the file won't show up until you put your credentials in. For now, we'll leave this unselected so we can see the file when we go to open hosts here in a minute. So I'll push OK. So we've got the privileges set up for the sharing. Then we'll want to make sure that we have assigned proper security. So I'll go to manage security. And we'll be sure that our access for full admin has a password. So let me add one now. I'll just put in one, two, three, four. If I look at this under advanced settings, I can see here again under extended privileges that the FM app, which is the extended privilege we need in order to share this file using FileMaker Server, is available for full access and staff. So everything boils down to FM app being selected and available for the given privilege set. So our security is in place. I'll push OK, push OK. 
admin123. And then we'll go here under File Options and just ensure that we're not automatically logging in as a particular user or with a password. This builds the security we're looking for in order to host our file. I'll push OK there. So our file is ready. It's shareable. It's protected. I didn't encrypt it. That's optional. If you are hosting with FileMaker Cloud, you will need to encrypt the file. We have a dedicated lesson for that in this course, so I won't go through that. But if you want that added security for your file, you can certainly encrypt it, then upload it to FileMaker Server. I'll close this file now, and we'll go to File, Sharing, Upload to Host. Here you want to define the IP address or the domain of your particular server. If you host with us or with another entity, that URL will be provided. If you're hosting your own, you'll need to acquire that URL and bind a domain to a particular IP address. And that's the information you'll provide on this screen. I'll just use my temporary IP address for this server, and I'll call it PCU. Now you may get this screen if you are working in a test environment and you haven't yet provided an SSL for the server. In my case, I just spun up this test server, didn't yet provide an SSL for it. So it's telling me that the connection is not encrypted and should be used for testing purposes only. This is perfectly fine for testing. I'll select this option here that says always permit connection to this host. Then I'll click connect. That's a one-time screen. Then it'll prompt me for a FileMaker server username and password. I'll do that and sign in. I have the option to change the directory where my file is placed. In some cases, you'll want to leave this just as the default, unless instructed otherwise. At the moment, I have two folders, a folder called Databases and one called Secure. If I were to put a file in the Secure folder, I would have to encrypt it before it gets there, otherwise it won't let me put it in that folder. This folder, however, will allow me to put unencrypted files. And you can see here's a folder for the existing sample file we looked at a moment ago. So I'll just leave it at the default location, push OK. And now we can browse to our desktop to go grab the file that we want to host, which is the PCU Gaming Company file. Click Open, and now it says the file is ready to be uploaded. And I'll click Upload. So that will upload the file host it with FileMaker and automatically open the file. I have another option here that says open with FileMaker Pro. So I can immediately turn around and open this hosted file. Now it's prompting me for credentials. I'll put in my credentials and now the file is open. There's a couple of ways to know that the file is being hosted. Here in parentheses, it usually puts the server name or in this case an IP. At the top right, you'll see either a locked icon or an unlocked icon like this. It's unlocked at the moment because we don't have an SSL certificate in place. You can also go to the data viewer and create a new expression within the get family and put in the word get host application version. That will tell you the version of server that is running your file. You also have the option to get host IP address and get host name. So at this point, this file is available for others to gain access to. If you want to send somebody a link to this file for their convenience, make it a little easier than what we went through, you can simply go to send link to database. This will pop open an email and automatically provide you a link to the database in question. It also tells you some of the rules of the road here. The client must have FileMaker installed on their computer. Database file must be opened on the host machine. Any firewalls between the client and server must allow FileMaker sharing. The client must have a valid account and password. The client must have network access to the host. I'm going to copy that URL now to my clipboard. And I'll open up a browser and paste. And then click Allow. And just like that, the file will open up. So that URL will allow users to get into this database. Obviously, they'll need their credentials as well, but that's an easy way to get started. Let me close this file now, and let me just open up FileMaker by itself. And I also have a listing here in the Recents. In addition to that, I can go to File, Hosts, Show Hosts. Then my PCU was automatically selected, and now it's prompting me to get into the file as well. So if I click here, 
it'll prompt me and I can get in that way. So a number of ways you can get into the file once it's hosted. Then I can go here to favorites and show favorites. And here's where I can manage my favorites. I'll leave you with one last tip in this lesson. If I go to file, file options and click icon, I can change the icon of this particular application. For this example, I'll pick a game that's installed on Macintosh called Chess, and I'll highlight that and get info, Command I, and copy the icon to my clipboard. Then I can put it in some sort of an art program, in this case, Snagit. There's my icon. It's quite large at the moment, but I'll just save this as a PNG file. I'll call it icon. Then we'll go back here to FileMaker, File Options, Icon, Custom, and we'll select Show PNG. I'll find it here in the area that I put it, icon.png, insert that, and now my app has this icon. The next time I go pick from Favorites and Show Favorites, I now have a custom icon for my application. So that concludes this lesson for sharing a file using FileMaker Server. We learned how to prepare the file with security and the privilege set. We uploaded it to FileMaker Server, and then we looked at numerous ways to access the file after it was hosted, where I can send somebody a link via email. We also looked at the recents and the favorites, and finally the custom icon. Well, I hope you enjoyed that lesson extract from the course called Claris FileMaker Pro Advanced 1. To find out more, go to ProductiveComputingUniversity.com, where you can enroll in this course, along with many others, training you on the Claris platform. If you are interested in taking multiple courses, it might make sense to invest in the Productive Computing University bundle package, which is one yearly price to gain access to the entire university library. As always, thanks for joining us on this video. Feel free to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.